Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Let me take a few minutes and share with you seven steps that you can use to slash your risk of developing dementia in later life or really any other of the neurological cognitive declines that come with getting older. Even if you have a first degree family member with one of these conditions, you can still slash your risk of ever developing it yourself. What's more important is your diet and your lifestyle and what you eat, what you drink, supplements you take, your sleep, those things more than cancel out bad genetics. So please pay attention, watch this video until the very end, and then consider sharing this with family members or anyone you know who has a mom or a dad or a grandparent with Alzheimer's or one of the other neurocognitive decline conditions that are epidemic in our world currently. Now let's talk about this. I've got seven steps that you can follow, and I actually have a bonus eighth step at the very end. So, but what I what I've done is I've tried to organize these steps from the most important to the least important. And that's not to say that step number six, seven, and eight are not important. They are, but they're not as important as step one, two, and three. And also I've tried to rank these in order of least expensive to more expensive at the end, okay? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to mimic our ancestors' lives over the last 200,000 years. What we're trying not to do is to live the way we've been living the last hundred years, because that's when the epidemics of all the neurocognitive decline syndromes have been skyrocketing, especially in the last 20 or 30 years. And so conditions I'm going to try to help you slash your risk of ever developing are Alzheimer's disease, which is the most severe type of dementia we currently know of. Any of the dementias, there's multiple different ones from vascular to idiopathic. There's there's a, a long list of the different dementias, none of which you want, I promise you. Hunting, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's, and then just overall cognitive decline, which comes with getting older for many, many people, but it doesn't have to be that way. And if you'll follow these seven steps and make them part of your life starting today or tomorrow, you won't have to worry about this nearly as much. Even if you have a mom or a dad or a grandparent, a direct relative who has one of these conditions, you can slash your risk by doing these seven steps, turning on uh, the, the correct genes through epigenetics and turning off the bad genes through epigenetics. You don't have to suffer the same fate, okay? Let's get into the seven steps with the bonus eighth. Number one is fasting. There's multiple research that shows that fasting will increase the level of autophagy in your brain. Now, what's autophagy? Basically, it means that you're, it's your self-cleaning oven. If you were an oven, autophagy is how you would self-clean. And there are many things you can do and many things you cannot do to increase the level of autophagy. And this is going to help you get rid of old and damaged neurons and develop new neurons. It's going to help you get rid of old mitochondria and, and make room for new, more efficient mitochondria. And all these things help your brain think better, think faster, and remember better. And so fasting is huge. And I'm going to put down in the show notes links to all of these steps so that you can actually look this stuff up. Everything I'm talking about today is is backed in research, but also backed in the common sense of our ancestral diet and way of living for the last 200,000, 250,000 years. And so fasting can either take the form of fasting for long periods of time, 24, 48, 72 hours. Uh, some people really enjoy that. I'm not a big fan of that myself. What I try to do is I try to restrict my time, my, my feeding window each day. And so each day of the week, unless there's some special occasion or some social upheaval in my life, I'll eat in a four or a six hour window. And so I'm fasting for 18 or 20 hours every day. And that gives my body a chance to really kick up autophagy and other things that we'll talk about later in this video. Uh, but it looks like the research is showing this, that, that any fast over 16 hours, you're going to ramp up autophagy at least a little bit. And then the longer you fast, the more autophagy will be occurring both in your brain and in the other organs of your body which is a very good thing. You really want that. Your body is very wise and very intelligent. It's not going to start breaking down good, healthy neurons and good, healthy 
mitochondria just because you don't eat. It's going to pick the sickest, the oldest, the most damaged, and it's going to autophagize those. And then you'll have room to put a new, a new healthy young neuron or mitochondria in its place. That's what helps your brain keep functioning for decades to come. So fasting is a big deal. The links will be down below. Number two is your diet. If you eat a very low carb, high healthy fat diet or a ketogenic diet, you're going the first of all, that is a fasting mimicking diet. There's research that shows that you get the same benefits as fasting, not as much by far in a way. Fasting is the best at initiating autophagy and other other ways of keeping your brain optimal. But a diet that's a low carb, high healthy fat or ketogenic diet is going to be a fasting mimicking diet. So you'll get some of the benefits of fasting, even though you just ate. But also any either of these diets is going to be full of good fatty acids, good quality fats, good quality cholesterol, good quality omega threes that your brain absolutely have has to have both for energy and for repair. And so you want to eat a diet that's high and healthy saturated fats and very low in carbohydrates. Basically, if you eat a carbohydrate, it needs to not it needs to never be a thoughtless carbohydrate. It needs to be a well-planned, thought-out carbohydrate because that's how our ancestors have lived for millennia. Number 3 is sleep. I can't emphasize this one enough. Sleep is vital for your brain to increase its autophagy levels, but also to initiate another system of brain cleaning that we've really only known about since about 2009-2010. Somewhere in there the glymphatic system was in, was discovered. It's been working for hundreds of thousands of years, but we just discovered it. Pretty much all mammals have this when we sleep long and deep. We actually have a it's and it's it's a lymphatic like system in our brain that that comes to life. And during waking hours, it's it's very inactive. Only when you're in deep sleep does the lymphatic system wake up and energize and start cleaning your brain. OK, and I'll, I'll put a link down to the wiki page. So you can learn a little bit about the glymphatic system because it's a very sexy concept and we haven't known about it for very long at all. But I think it's a very big deal. So you've got to sleep. And I'm going to make another, another video soon how to hack your sleep and get the longest, deepest sleep you can every single night, because that's vital for keeping dementia away. Number four is exercise. Now I talk about often on my, my videos that exercise is not that great of a method of weight loss, but when it comes to your brain health, when it comes to keeping Alzheimer's and other sorts of, of, of neuro decline syndromes at bay, exercise is hard to beat. And you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to join the gym. You don't have to run on the treadmill for two hours a day to get this benefit. It looks like from the research, which I'm going to link to down below, that, that going for a 30-minute walk two or three times a week and then doing some high-intensity interval training two or three times a week is all it takes to ramp up the autophagy in your brain and to help your brain stay young, healthy, and pliable, which is what you're looking for. So all four of these are free. All the first four steps are completely free. You don't have to spend an extra penny to do any of those. Now I want you to put in the comments, which one is your favorite? Which one you're already doing? Fasting, sleep, exercise, uh, or diet? Which one are you doing? Or if you're doing all four, let me know in the comments. Number five is thermogenics. And this is something I've been experimenting with and researching for a while now. And it's basically taking your body outside of its comfort zone temperature wise. And so this this could be taking a, a good long hot shower. That's good. Or if you want to spend the extra money and go to a sauna or, or put a sauna in your house, you could do that. But that's a lot of extra money. All you really need to do is just take a hot shower or a very hot bath. That stimulates autophagy in the brain. And then the opposite of that is to get very cold sometimes. And this could include jumping in the swimming pool that should already be closed but still isn't. It could be taking a cold shower. It could be an ice bath. It could be any number of ways. But for most of us, you can just go outside in the summer or when it's hot and then go outside in the winter when it's hot. Don't stay at room temperature all the time. That's actually a very unnatural condition for the human body to just be at 70 degrees every day of the week, every day of the year. That's not normal. That's not natural. Our body is used to being stressed by the extremes of temperature, both high and low. And you need to mimic that in order to optimize the autophagy that's occurring in your brain. Next is 
coffee. Number six is coffee. Yeah, that's right. Coffee and real green tea. Okay. So coffee, any of the teas that are natural and, and real green, tr- green tea. I don't mean Lipton green tea in the bottle from China Mart. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real green tea. There's actually research that shows that coffee, real tea, and real green tea will actually ramp up autophagy in your brain, which is a very good thing. You want that. And so don't be afraid of coffee. Medical science has been trying to prove since Mr. Post developed Postum a new breakfast drink he was trying to market. We've been trying to prove that coffee is bad for humans in some way, and we just can't do it. I I can't find any research that coffee is bad for you, and it actually helps your brain stay young and more flexible, and that's a very good thing. Next are some um, uh, spices, herbs. So let's talk about that. Uh, Curcumin or turmeric. There's several studies that show that that tends to increase the rate of autophagy in your brain. And then also ginger root also has some research that shows that it probably does this. You can either take these in the form of a supplement if you don't like the flavor, but I love the taste of both. And so I'll often season my meat with with uh, turmeric or ginger root, just enough for flavor. And that also probably is a good thing for your brain as well. There's a little bit of research to back that up. Next is two things that that have that are very interesting. They have some interesting research behind them, which I'll link to below. Uh, reishi mushrooms and broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts have sulforaphane. Sulfura flame. Yeah, that was terrible. I don't know. Look it up. I'll put a link down below. I have trouble with that word. But they, they both have many, many compounds in them that tend to ramp up autophagy in your brain, which is a very good thing. And so you can take either of these as a supplement, which I don't recommend. You can also grow both of these at home. Okay, you can grow the mushrooms in the basement and you can grow broccoli sprouts on your kitchen counter with a a sweet little sprouter set up that I'll link to down down below. But either of those kind of helps your brain a little bit ramp up autophagy and keep your brain clean and flexible. And then that's your eight steps right there. And so I want you to focus on steps one, two, three, and four. And then if you also want to do five, six, seven, and eight, that's fine. They help. There's no doubt about it, but they're, they're the the steps one, two, three, and four. That's the 90%. Okay. That's going to get you 90% of the way. And if you've got steps one, two, three, and four down pat, and you want to work on five, six, seven, and eight, that's fine. If you want to spend a little money on the last four steps, that's fine. But I want you to focus all your energy and all your resources on perfecting your fasting, your diet, your sleep, and your exercise, okay? Those are by far the most important. And then if later on you want to play with some thermogenics, definitely drink your coffee or your real green tea every day. Use some curcumin or some turmeric or some ginger root, and then get some reishi mushrooms and some broccoli sprouts. That's cool, but make sure that you take care of the most common things first, okay? Now, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, click the subscribe button. It's just a click right there and click the little bell beside it so you get a notification every time I post a new video. And then also, if my videos have helped your health in some way, you can click on my Patreon link down below. It's a quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way so that I have more time to make videos just like this one. And then also catch Nisha and I on our Facebook Live. We do it every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and you can actually ask us questions, and we'll try our best to answer them. All right, guys, this is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.